I'm sat today at the foot of the historic Pont Var in Llanroost in North Wales. I've probably got the pronunciations completely mangled there. I do apologise to any Welsh-speaking viewers. It was completed in 1636. And interestingly, there's a sundial in the middle which commemorates the Tercetenary in 1936. So it's nearly 400 years old, this bridge, and it's still carrying far too much traffic. I'm going to stand in the middle of the bridge here. There's a, two recesses for pedestrians. So the problem you've got now is across the River Conway between Llandudno and Betisicoid, you've got two river crossings. This is one of them. The other one's better, but this one gets a lot more traffic because this is where the town is. And the problem is, it's only a single track bridge that feeds into a very tight T-junction. So if two vehicles want to cross at the same time, all hell breaks loose. And you get some absolutely entertaining scenes like this. The other problem is, is because this bridge is so narrow there's actually nowhere for you to go as a pedestrian you have to share this single file traffic bridge so what do you do about it well one of the things they've tried to do i'll show you on the bridge itself are a number of detection loops so when a vehicle comes across from clan roost it triggers the wigwag signals which then mean that there's a mandatory stop on this side that's a good thing for vehicles coming from this approach but the problem is there's nothing on the other side so if you turn in from the other side and somebody ignores these signals which is common unfortunately the t-junction on the other side goes to pot now for me the obvious answer would be to provide proper traffic lights on all approaches but you end up then causing lots more traffic problems in the town itself, which is already pretty congested. It's all just a little bit weird though, because despite having the wigwag signals, there's no actual stop line painted on the road. Just a give way line. This is why I love stuff like this though, weirdness like this that nobody can quite explain. Why has it been done like this? Why was it not just a standard set of traffic signals? It's really hard to explain. There's also an 18 ton weight limit on this bridge because it's ancient. It really is a shame. It's... All things considered though, it is a lovely part of the world. So if you're in this area, come and give it a visit. But maybe don't drive over the bridge here. You can get the train from Clandidno Junction, park there, get the train down here. I mean, in June 2023, this video was recorded in July 2023, so just a month before I filmed this video, a coach hit the side of the bridge, and that meant it had to be, had to be repaired, and it was closed for a long time. Where do you reroute traffic to, though? The next bridge is several miles downstream at Tally Caffin, or several miles upstream at Betsy Coyd. This bridge is the only bridge to get from Clanroos to the west side of the River Conway, so something needs to be done but what and how and this is the problem when you have national parks and sensitive areas like this with a lot of history designing for modern day road traffic becomes difficult and there are no easy answers so i've um detoured on the way home to uh, bangor on d and there's another narrow single track ancient bridge but this one is actually only one-way traffic 
Is that an option? Maybe not with the detours involved, but you know, means must. You see, actually this bridge still having traffic on it is even less explicable than Clanroost because I'm standing next to the Bangor on D bypass which is a much better road and has a nice new crossing over the River Dee. So why would you need to drive across here other than to shortcut? Just strikes me as a little bit odd. We don't seem to understand how bridges, you know, bridges are important traffic links, yes, but sometimes they're better for pedestrians and cyclists, not necessarily drivers. With that, I'll catch you next time. Bye!